This video was brought to you by Red Bull Peach Edition. I'm just kidding. But I need this. I was out late at the Ye and Drake showing here in Toronto. Um, this is gonna be a little bit of a different video for y'all, uh, but check this out, man. This Airbnb has amazing views. So I figured while I'm here, let me show you guys exactly what's on my iPad, exactly how I have it. I'm not gonna set up anything to make it look cool. I'm just gonna show you exactly how it is. And also I wanna show you off a new accessory I got that I think has changed the game. First, I'm gonna drink this Red Bull that I'm not sponsored by. So here it is. Let me start off with my lock screen so you guys can see what wallpaper I'm using. Definitely using the Night Moves wallpaper by Canusi will be linked down in the description. I just love the way it unlocks. Like, look at this. That is just the coolest thing ever. But anyway, basic lock screen. I'm currently in do not disturb mode because I don't want any calls while I'm doing this video. But uh, yeah, let's um, step into it. All right, so on my lock screen, I only have one. Um, on my iPad, I just stick with one lock screen. And the reason why is because I keep everything in the app drawer. You know, it's a lot easier for me to, I use this command a lot, command spacebar to search for everything. So if I ever need an app, you know, I just type it in even if I have it in my bar at the bottom, I just type it in. Um, it's the way I like to navigate iOS or iPad OS, if you will. It's just way easier and more intuitive for me personally. Quick little shortcut. Um, also, you can swipe down from the top and type as well. So I use that a lot. Um, on the home screen, I have my weather widget. I also have a Twitch widget and a TV widget. Um, I keep these widgets on here mostly because I do watch Twitch on here if I'm ever like trying to have some background noise, maybe like a, you know, a game or something that's out and I want to watch it. You know, I love watching, you know, people play Demon Souls and Rage, which is always pretty fun. Um, also, the TV app, I use that quite a bit. Once I go into the TV app, I can actually you know, jump right back into anything. So I have Apple TVs and all my TVs. I'm able to just jump here and pick up on a TV show or a movie or something that I was watching before. And so the TV app is very, very handy. I use it all the time and that is why I have a widget. Um, next I have Netflix for obvious reasons. I have my Sonos player. That is the app that I use to control all the speakers in my home. And because I'm not home right now, it's not going to show up. But normally my home system would show up here. Stardew Valley. This game, I haven't played on the iPad too much. I mostly played on the iPhone, but I love this app. I mean, I love this game because it's a nice way to pass the time. And also it's pretty cool. It's a nice farm simulation game. Definitely check it out if you haven't heard of Stardew Valley. And it's by a company called Chucklefish, which also just recently came out with a game that I really love called Eastward. It's on the Nintendo Switch. Um, so if you're looking for a very robust game, Stardew Valley is highly recommended. I'm not gonna get into a whole play, but yeah, it is, it's, it's a pretty cool game, very worth the money. Next we have Microsoft Excel. I mean, I use this for work and Excel is just mandatory. I mean, come on now. Also, I have Image Canon. This is a new app from Canon that allows me to automatically transfer footage from my camera to this iPad and then into the cloud. 
very useful. I have not set it up on the iPad only because I recently uh, reinstalled it. I was having some issues, but this is a great app to use if you have a Canon camera. Highly recommend it. Next, I have my Mint Mobile app. I recently switched over from Verizon to Mint Mobile. And although I don't have coverage here in Canada, I am very, very excited to be paying $30 a month for cellular coverage that is pretty comparable to Verizon in my location. So very, very excited about saving that money because I mean, it's just, it's more money for, you know, toys. Firefox Focus, there's really only one reason to use this app and that is to browse the internet privately. So if I'm ever trying to shop for something that I don't want cookies to pick up on, I use Firefox Focus. Um, it's also a good way to test out other websites to make sure that it is pulling the right information. Definitely use something like this if you're shopping for plane tickets. Sometimes cookies will cause you to have to pay more for plane tickets and apps like Firefox Focus help you do it. So Firefox Focus is essentially a private browser that you know doesn't store anything. It doesn't store any data. It's a nice uh, way to just browse the internet anonymously. Um, yeah, pretty cool. And it automatically erases all your data every time you exit, which is awesome. Down here, I just have a really large calendar widget. It's just a great way for me to see everything that's going on. And we swipe up. I have all my actual documents from my files app. And this is actually very useful because it pulls all your recent files. And I think I love this widget. I love when it's like automatically showing up because I have it set to like automatically rotate all the widgets. And this is really cool to just have all my files here. It's almost like having files on your desktop. So for people out there who say that they can't use an iPad as a computer, there you go. Let's talk about some of my favorite apps. We're done talking about the home screen. So first of all, favorite app. I've had this app for years, years. I used to use Reader when like back in like 2010 and it has slowly evolved over the years. I've had to buy it a couple new times because they've come out with new versions. But this is just a really fun way to browse your favorite websites and really easy. You just use that down arrow key and you can kind of sort through some of the you know articles and then you can favorite them which is super cool because you can come back to them later you can download them offline it's just i love the way it's designed it's very minimal it's very straightforward you can subscribe to different websites and you can also change like the mode so like if i wanted to do this in reader mode i can switch it to reader mode and it's a nice lo-fi way to experience the web now, a lot of websites like The Verge actually sometimes cut off some of the articles and they want you to go to the website, which sucks. Um, but I mean, should I really be getting my news from The Verge anyway? Um, let's go to the next app. Uh, let's talk about Affinity Photo. Now, I don't use this too, too much, but like I've used it to do some edits, you know, like when I was working on some thumbnails or things like that. Here's a thumbnail of a video that I uh, am working on, but you see, I tried to add a screen in here to kind of make it pop more. I failed. I'm still learning it, but it is a very useful app. Highly recommended if you guys are out there, you know, trying to do Photoshop S things on an iPad. Affinity Photo is, is top notch. Next, I have LumaFusion. Now, LumaFusion and I have a love-hate relationship. Um, as you can see, it's popping up asking for external media. I love this app. I think it's amazing, but I think that if you have an iPad, you really need like a one terabyte iPad or a 512 at least to effectively use LumaFusion. And that's mostly because I have really large files from my Canon and I found that, you know, this just wasn't very convenient to have like a SSD hanging off your iPad trying to edit on the go but it's a full featured video editor very intuitive very fun to use uh, let me see if I can go to any so here's the intro that I created I actually made this intro in LumaFusion so let me go in here you can see the different layers
can adjust the, the panel sizing and everything. So this is the thing that I did. And what's cool about this is I essentially overlaid one image over the other. And then I came in here and I did the keyframes to basically make it show up. Yeah, pretty simple. I did it all in LumaFusion. So the intro that you see on this video, I did it on my iPad. That's enough about LumaFusion. Let's talk about Procreate. Now Procreate is, is another one of my favorite apps. I use it to draw all the time. Um, it's really, it's a great way to like sketch out work, things that I need to do. And you know, when I'm trying to like map out how I'm going to design something, I use LumaFusion. It's a great drawing, great sketch pad, but it's also a art, you know, uh, board. So if you're trying to learn how to draw digitally, it's a great, great app to check out. You know, floor plans, trying to figure out how to design my Wi-Fi. I essentially put nodes. Yeah, I mean, it's just a, a, a great app to use. Highly recommended. Everything will be linked in the description. No affiliate links. I don't make any money off any of these apps, um, but a lot of these apps are paid apps, but they are worth it if you are a professional and looking for strong apps to build your base, build your business off of. Uh, next up is the settings app, because you know you have to go to settings for everything with Apple. Um, here's my files app, which allows me to dive further than what this widget gives me. Safari, of course. Roam Research. Now, Roam Research is an, an entire video. I could do an entire video about Roam Research, but this is a app that I use to take notes and all of my notes are linked together like metadata. It is the most amazing thing ever. You want, let me give you a visual. This is a representation of all my notes over the last two years. And what you're seeing here is all the connections. So if I talk about somebody in my notes, they are an actor. They are having their own page, which is somewhere on this screen. And if they're ever linked to like a meeting or an event or another day or something like that, you're essentially seeing all the connections. The larger hotspots that you see are the larger pages. So this might be my to-do page. This might be my done page. So on my task list every day, week to week, you are basically seeing a progression of how much I'm getting done and how much I'm not getting done. So it is a different way of thinking about note taking and productivity. You need to check this out. Do some research on Rome Research. There's several videos. It is literally, and I mean literally, my second brain. Look at this. These are my neural brain links, all this stuff linking together. If I'm on a call with someone, if I'm talking to someone, I can go back here and recall it. This tool has saved my brain, allows me to keep a lot of things on here and out of my head so I don't have to remember it, but I can always recall it quickly because second brain. Shout out to the homie Jesse. He literally changed my life with this app and I'm hoping that if you are someone who thinks like me and maybe needs an app like this, this can help you. It's not cheap, but it is very worth it. I use it every single day. And just a, let's try something here. In the comments, I want y'all to tell me what my server name means. Pause it. It's a combination of two words. That's your only, only clue. All right, let's move on to the next app. That's Adobe Creative Cloud. This is essentially the Adobe app that brings up all of my Creative Cloud documents. I use this quite often. This is where I keep my style guide and all of my assets for the Matt Gray brand. It is extremely helpful to have all these assets on hand so that you can you know, access them when you need to download images. You know, it's just a great tool. It's on every single device that has it, that has Adobe on it, so I can access it anywhere. And come on, man. Adobe, y'all killing it. 
For a while, when I was using a PC, I really felt like if you set things up properly, Adobe Creative Cloud could replace iCloud. I was wrong. I was wrong. But I really felt like it had the potential to. So if you are not fully in the Apple ecosystem, you're still in Adobe in a Windows PC, check out Adobe Creative Cloud. I think it's a great way to move files back and forth between devices, any device. Next, I have Slack, of course, for work, messages, and that's it. That is my home screen, and this is what's on my iPad. But before I go, I want to talk about this accessory that I just got. Now, I recently picked up the Apple Magic Keyboard for the iPad Pro 11-inch, and I grabbed white. I grabbed white and it's holding up pretty good. It's holding up too good, actually. And I have a confession. I have a confession, guys. This is a D brand skin. And this video is sponsored by D brands. I'm just playing. No, this is a D brand skin. So if you guys want white, if you see white on sale anywhere, don't be scared. Just buy it and get a white D-Benz and get a white D-Brand skin. It looks great. Like, it really does. I got a little bubble here. That's it. It does a great job around the logo. You know, it looks a little funky. You know, you could I could probably heat this up and, and you know, take a pencil or something and kind of like outline it. But I'm okay with it. And maybe I'll put some um, stickers on this. Who knows? Who knows? I don't care anymore. It is super durable. I can throw it around anywhere. It wipes down clean. And you guys have saw me using the smart keyboard for a while. And I mean, this thing, the keys are amazing. It is a really, really nice thing. But yo. Thank you guys for watching. Different kind of video. I just wanted to get this out there to you guys, show you guys what's on my iPad. Raw and unfiltered. I hope you guys have a great evening. Thank you guys for watching. Stay up.